What is your focus keyword for 2021? I haven't discovered mine yet, but we're hoping we can all figure that out today. On the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now, and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling, and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 147. As always, you can find our show notes over at WBNLpodcasts.com. If you're listening on YouTube, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe and click that notification bell so you get reminded of our podcast every week. Jenna Bryan, what are we talking about today? Well, I want to talk about something that we cover. We I was looking at this uh, information and I think we created in 2016. Okay, so we came up with this intentions map, which is based on the Feng Shui Bagua map in 2016, but I want to do something slightly different today with it. I want to focus more. I am going to go over it and go through a little exercise to show you how you could help pick an area or multiple areas or really focus on some key things in all areas of your life, including your career. But I really love this idea. I did this last year. I love the idea of selecting a, finding a key word, a word that you can turn into an affirmation that is your focus for the year. Cool. So this is in lieu of resolutions. I am not a believer in resolutions. I think they're so contrite and people do them like, oh yeah, what's your resolution? And then by February, everybody's resolutions are out the door. You know? Pretty true. I, mean, I think that's accurate. I think I think maybe some people will get into it um, and so on. Um, so this is not about this is more about really doing a deep dive into reflecting. And this is what we've been talking about all month. Right. We've done business planning. We've gotten into this month, last month and gratitude and this month, which is really starting to do some reflection on what you're grateful for and so forth. And so in the month of December, we have been all focused on this awesome time here. We're almost to the end of the year to do this final work. and a really deeper dive into reflecting on the past year. I shared some great resources that are helping me. Maybe you have found some things that are helping you, but I think this is the time to slow down, check in with yourself and not be so chaotic and not be so stressed and worried about everything that's happening. That's out of our control in the world. Uh, and this is an awesome way to end this ex to basically end this segment because as we move into the new year, we are. We really have a great game plan for you. We're very excited about the direction we're taking WBNL Coaching. We're rewriting some of our courses. We're taking all the ways that we're doing coaching now, and we're turning that into training. We're really going to be doing our coaching program. If you follow along with us here, Facebook Live on YouTube, we be doing a little bit more detailed stuff on YouTube. So if you followed along with us, you're going to get. We're going to move away from this mindset. Part because we've done enough of this and goal yeah, setting and intentions. Yeah. Right. So then we're going to get into the serious deep dive of keep liking that word today, deep dive, because that's what we need to do uh, on your business, you know. And uh, Cosmos, Cosmo Morabi is going to be joining us, and we're going to be doing things on tech, the right tools to use, Facebook advertising, all the things that you all, everybody always wants to know. Uh, Matt's going to continue with graphics and marketing and how to use Canva. Until we don't have, we run out of ideas for Canva, which I don't think is going to take. It's not going to, it's not going to happen soon. There's right. endless things to do with Canva. So we'll always have creative things. Well, frankly, anything that we come up with, we're generally going to go to Canva to make it happen. That's right. right. So there'll be endless ideas. You could tell us things that you want to do, but that's where we're headed in, in, in 2021, the direction of the company. So today, this is about helping you focus uh, and find a keyword that you can turn into an affirmation. Now, I did this last year. And my word was self-discipline, and it was mostly to work on uh, helping me make decisions. This is one of the key things about using a keyword about um, finding balance. So instead of using balance, I really wanted to work on self-discipline for sticking with a routine. I have struggled with it again all through the year, but I have come back to that word of, am I, is this a good decision for me? Is this good for um instead of just getting up every day and go and jumping into the work, how do I find a little balance? And 
having the discipline to work on finances and I've saved money. So that was the word for me, you know, because I needed to, that was the thing I needed the most in my life to be focused in those two key areas of my life. Um, myself, my health and my wealth, <laughs> health and wealth. through I like that. Um, so you, do you don't set, do you set resolutions? No, I don't. But you know what, this year I'm going to do this. I'm going to follow, I'm going to follow this path this year. All right. So, so now what we have in the show notes and Matt, I've updated some of those show notes. If you've already put them in there that I just need to help uh, I've changed a few of the words and added a few things to it. Great. So what I'm going to do first is, is share this idea of choosing a keyword and I went, I, so I got up yesterday, the other day, yesterday, and even this morning, I was like, okay, I want to go find a bunch of words that, because this is the issue that I had last year. Um, what are all the words that I could really focus on? So like anything, of course, somebody's already written articles on this, right? Down the rabbit hole you went. I went to Google, but I was like looking for, so I just basically Googled, you know, key focus words for the year. I had to stop using keywords as the search because it kept coming up with SEO keywords, which is so funny. So I was like, word for the year, you know, focus word for the year. And sure enough, I found a couple great articles of some folks at blog that already has like 150, 300 words. So I'm going to share those things with you here in a second. And we'll put it in the links to those particular articles, blog posts. But let's start with that because I the thought here is this. Um, so I'm going to bring up a, a word cloud. So I love this word cloud thing that we've used this before, right? Sure. Um, so here, there's two things I'm going to. Well, first I'll show I'll, for the linear people amongst us. Let's look at the chart that I could you could download off one of these uh, sites. And again, we have the link, the source link to it. So you have the word of the year ideas, and you know what? I am like this is really small for me. I was just going to say. I might have to get out my spectacles. Um, exactly right. Nope, so, not, nope. Does anything does anything stand out for you on that list? Let so, me let me get closer. <laughs> yeah, oh, is there any way to make this bigger? Not really. Huh? You have to just make your screen bigger. So you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to stop sharing oh. that and let me go share this word bubble, which is way cooler. The word art. Well, that'll hey, that leads the witness though. Focus. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, but the point is, we're going to give you this huge list of things. Um, so just up front, I want to tell you there's a whole bunch of resources that are in our show notes today. But you can see, you, it, but which is also cool because you could take the, the words. We're going to go a little deeper here into these nine areas of the, of the Bagua map that we've converted to a focus for each area of your life. And we have big detail instructions, but the idea is to help you think about, I'm not saying you need nine keywords. I am going to walk you through that there might be something in your relationship area that you want to work on. And there may be a word that stands yeah. out to you that you can turn into an affirmation. That's all we're talking you know about. Well, you, know word, you know what word popped out for me on that is what? unlimited. I like that. See that? Now I love it. So what, what happens is if we give you this big, huge list, you could circle them. Well, first you should go through this next exercise that I'm going to talk about. Because what I love about this idea is that we could, you could select several words, not choose 150 words, but choose 20 words or something that fit into these areas for you, then turn it into a word art thing like this that you could use as something that's on your screensaver. And it's yeah. all your keywords for the year, all the things that are empowering words. And it's just another vision map idea. And um, where do you do this? There's there's a place online. I can't, maybe you can help us. Yeah, find I'll, that. I'll Google it and I'll put it in the show notes. So we, I've used it before. I just can't think of it. And it's totally free. You go to the site, you pop all the words in and it, it turns it into a mind map, a word map. And then you can change the colors. You can do this shuffle thing, right? You can have different words pop out by just playing with it and keep moving it around. And I love this idea. So I'm going to do this because I want all my power words in a document in a little image that I could put on my screensaver, I could print out, I could put whatever. It's very much like, see what Matt's done on the back of our, uh, you know, uh, if you go to our website, he found a really cool image that that are stones that have, again, power words. They're, yeah. they're focused keywords, right? We're doing the same thing subliminally. And this is what's really important about this is that when you go through the exercise, you know, the thing here is you, you, you could just, whatever you want to do. If you want to go take the next deep dive, I'm going to walk you through or you just want to go through a list of words and do you've been doing if you've been doing some work on what's been working in your life and so forth. 
then go for it, you know, um, then go deeper. And then now you have really done some work and you've got words that can be powerful. Now, what I love about um, another way to do this is that turn these words into affirmations. And so at the top of this image, what I would like to see is I am dot, dot, dot. Yeah. And then the words are organized and focused and I am thriving, you know, or I thrive. Um, so that becomes something that you do every single day in your daily routine. You might read them off aloud. You might record this and listen to it. You see it every day. You read it out loud. And those are affirmations and those are powerful things. So just really love this. I found this and I just totally thought it was so cool. Um, so, oh yeah, cool. That's what, did you just find that at work? Yeah, th actually this is a great site because this site actually has 11 different links of places you can go to build word clouds. There's one on here that you can actually build a word cloud of URLs, which is kind of a cool thing too. So anyway, go here. There's a lot of options and they're all free. I'll put this in the show notes too. For okay, those of you who don't know what here means. <laughs> All right. So what I want to talk about uh, on this, I was mentioning, like going a little deeper on this is so if you're familiar with the the ancient art of uh, feng shui, it, it teaches the power of intention. I've studied it. I like it. I like it as a as just a simple the, sim the simplicity of, of how it is in your life. But I have also worked with Mary Swift, who is a she's an astrologist and she's a feng shui specialist uh, here. I don't know if she's still working, but. I've known her for years and she uh, was used to teach classes for real estate agents on understanding the principles of feng shui. So if you have a client who is who really believes and chooses homes based on certain principles that are in feng shui. So all these things can tie over into your life. But the, to me, the basic premises of this is you whether you realize it or not, you if you believe in the feng shui or you start studying it and you understand it, it's very powerful because I had her come do something, kind of do a birthday reading for me where she did astrology, but she also went through my house. This is something very interesting that she does and other people who study feng shui do. They go to someone's house and they just don't even know anything about them and they walk around and they take note of where you're placing things, what, how you choose artwork, colors that you choose, um, whether or not something's cluttered or not cluttered, and it indicates things. So, for example, you know, she went through and and I was trying to make decisions in my career at that time. And so she, it's this is basically a map of these areas. And so if you're not seeing it, if you're listening on the podcast, it's, you'll have to go look at the show notes where we have our replay or go to YouTube. And you can see a picture of these nine squares which start at the upper left-hand corner for wealth. And I'm going to read them across fame, relationship, then family, health is in the center, creativity on the bottom three squares are knowledge and career and travel. Okay. So kind of cool nine areas to focus on. Right. And I love this for focusing on areas of your life that you want to set goals or intentions. I'm going to stop using goals. So, cause right now everything to me is about intentions and focus, right? So when you hear me say goal, change it to eh. intentions, right? My intention. I'll do the eh noise. And eh, okay. So she basically came in and I'm talking to her later after she kind of tours my house and taking notes and, and set, and I'm like, well, I'm trying to make this big decision about moving away from a real, uh, a career and start a, Coach, it was the first time I was wanting to move into coaching before I met you, Matt. And so she just proceeds to tell me in the career area, which was in this where this map kind of lays onto the floor plan of your house, was a little nook area in my little townhome that I had. And she just proceeded to tell me the colors I had chosen were blocking me from making any decisions. And I had done this and I had done that. And she did that throughout my house. And I was like, wow, this is really crazy. So, so what do you do? There's cures. And so change the color of the paint to this, set an intention by doing, putting something here. Now, what's powerful about this is whether or not you believe in astrology or numerology or any of this stuff, I happen to believe in it because I think it's not about the numerology or the feng shui. I think it's about you setting your intentions. Sure. And that's just a creative way to explain it. That's the simplified way. I think it's deeper, but ultimately it's you making a decision on what to do. Now, if subconsciously I wasn't ready to make that decision or I was wondering why was I so frustrated just because I went and now and changed this, honestly, just because I set the intention and did something, i.e. 
change the paint. It's also, I started thinking about what I wanted clear. See, with. that's exactly right. It, it changed your focus. Like I magically your rubbed yeah. the genies, you know, the map, the, uh, the Aladdin's lamp, like in a um, secret. And magically it happens, but I set an intention, I took an action, and then the universe started helping me out. That's the way I see it. That's me. Okay. Hey Dan, let me ask you a question. When you say you they lay this over your your your, your townhouse, do they is there is this always in one direction, like oriented the same way, or mm -hmm. do they orient it in your house kind of the way you oh, that's a great work? question? So you, this um, for the whole floor plan of your house, you orient this where your front door is. <clears throat> so okay. you, you take your floor plan and you would lay this as best you can. So in my case, my front door was my front door was more in the travel area. Okay. okay. Because it my front door opened and the house went that way, right? It wasn't the center of the house. Then when you go into each room, you can take this same map and lay it on the front, the way you enter the room. So when you enter the room, you would lay this as you were walking into the room. So like in the room I'm in now, the door is in the knowledge corner. Yeah. Okay? And so then you can kind of get a rough sense of it. And then eat, and then so you can even design things in your home the, so that there's intention with it. There's a lot that you can just go get some feng shui books or stuff. Well, online. it's interesting to me because I, you know, what I'll, what I, my mind always goes to, uh, cartography right maps yeah. and globes and orbs i'm like is there is this like a compass rose is there a north south east west yeah, right here? Kind of like that so i know that room you're in so if we were to lay this map on your room as you're in there the not your door is in the knowledge yeah that hole up behind me would be the knowledge <laughs> right and then the in the middle of where your bookshelf is family and community and then the wealth area is in that back left corner and so right. it's kind of where i think you have uh where the closet the is. closets are so there's mirrors and stuff. So frankly, we should talk about that because there is something that you can do in that corner. Um, hanging well, hey, to that point, there is a lot of wealth that's been spent in that closet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, you get the idea. And there's, so we're getting into like a cool feng shui. This, now, clearly what is interesting is you're sitting in the sort of travel area. Your desk sits in travel. Part of where your board is is yeah. in travel and, and in career. career and in career, right? And kind of helps in the middle. So anyway, very cool, right? That's so, interesting. So the idea there is, so that's kind of neat to talk a little bit about feng shui for a minute because the idea there is you can you can actually so helping yourself with the next part I'm going to talk about is each area you you take each area and we've we've put some words of what wealth means prosperity and power okay famous reputation and clarity um you know so your reputation fame doesn't doesn't necessarily mean you know you're famous you know you're rich and famous it just means how the world sees you okay um so what's cool about this is you can go through each of the areas and we have a very detailed um thing that goes with this it's this is actually part of our my path uh, thing so Matt, if we if we could take out the intentions and the instructions as a separate PDF and put it in our show notes, sure. Um, or we could just put the my path up there again, and people could go. No, let's put it all up there. It's good stuff for anybody. Okay, but there basically is detailed instructions for each of the nine squares, which, by the way, are have a color that also reflects that area. Again, there's science in my world, whether it's ancient or not. That's behind all. It's all about setting intention. It kind of helps you too if you're going to use a little bit of this with, with um, helping in your area. By the way, you can even do this map all the way down to your desk, setting an intention on the desk space that you're in. So the upper left hand corner is always the wealth and power corner. So putting some powerful like a plant for growth and indicate you know certain things. If you read some feng shui stuff, there's certain five or six cool things that you can do in that corner of your desk to ground it for. You want to focus on bringing more wealth in the upper right hand corner of any room, your, your entire house or your desk even is your relationship corner. So if you're wanting to strengthen relationships or bring a relationship in, then you put like pairs of things in that corner, you know, like a, a pair of swans or a pair of, you know, a picture of something like that. Right. Um, so anyway, that's the kind of stuff that you can do um, that sets an intention and then if you study it and you're aware of it, and it's the exact thing that we're talking about today, you set an intention by choosing a key word in each of those areas. So we've got a few things in the show notes that we'll tell you about when you go to each of these areas. There's some questions to ask. 
you know, that are very similar to what we've been doing. You know, what do you want more of in your life? What are you most grateful for in each of these areas? What do you want less of in your life? And if you focus on the challenges and the, the things that you don't want, then just turn the word into a, a positive. So if somebody has been dealing with a lot of fear and they want to be less fearful, they can choose brave or fearless. I love the word fearless. Yeah. So fearless is a great power word if you're really wanting to overcome that or if there's whatever. So that's actually a really interesting way to help you come up with the keywords is to, to become aware of what negative thing you've had or focused right, to on overcome. And, and then change it into a positive word. What do you want to improve on in this year? So maybe you've been working on something and um, so discipline for me in the wealth area would, would be my word. <laughs> yeah. One of the words, right? Um, you know, it could be that. It could be discipline and saving and, and, and building all that. You know, you, I, could go, I could go that way with it. I could also go with a word for visualizing the, 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 the abundance and success of our business, right? So um, think about what's not going well. I just mentioned that. Okay, so then you just choose a focus area. You can do anything you want in these squares. You can put the word, you can put it as a, you can put it as an affirmation. Remember, it's always be, do, have, I am, I do, I have, and positive affirmative word. And you can po post that into each of the areas. And then honestly, my overarching sort of thing to this is choose an over, choose the theme of your year. That's what I think is the coolest thing. So you could have, you may be like fine in some of these areas. Um, and you, but you know, I love the idea of cho choosing these nine areas. And so, for example, in knowledge, maybe you really want to work on something, personal development or growth. So you can also use this as a bit of a uh, setting, setting a intention to go finish a project or just start a training course that you wanted to do. And right. they could be projects that are under this as well. But it, but the thing we're talking about today is an intention or a focus. And maybe what you need is just to look at the the Bagua map we've created and choose the area that you really want to focus on for the new year. It could be health. It could be your career. It could be, you could just be focusing on being more creative and uh, maybe writing that book you've been saying you're going to write. Okay. Um, you know, I don't know. I just love it. So what I think will help you is the words, the, the, the word charts and the links to, we'll put, we'll, we'll, we'll put these things up and we've annotated it on our show notes. You can go to, these couple links that I have found, um, maybe do your own Googling and you will um, see endless words that are good power words and just have some fun going through that, taking a look at this map and downloading it and spending an hour or so maybe between now and the end of the year. That's what I'm going to be doing. Yep. And, uh, you know, go through it. So when you and then it, it'll all come together for you. So in the instructions, I've got a little bit more detail like what does prosperity and abundance mean to you? You know, is it about security? You know, so it gives you ideas, you know. Um, the I mentioned fame is how the world sees you. Relationships are about personal, family, but also partnerships, you know, business partnerships. It's not just about um, uh, romantic relationships. Family, you know, is also about community and growth. Um, the... You know, what else can you do to get involved in your local community? Is there things that you can do this year that you want to focus on bringing your family closer together? That one's big for me because I'm doing it. Right. Set the intention and we're all moving closer to each other. Mm -hmm. Health is about balance and well-being. It's usually a big focus for um, for everyone, right? Uh, so anyway, that's where you can go with all that. Creativity can also be about children. So when you, in the ancient, uh, when the, in the feng shui area, that's also we, you know, what's interesting is because when you read about that, it's about children are creative and they're joyful and they're in the moment, you know, and they are, that's, we need to remember to go back to that time in our lives yep. to really touch into our creative ways, you know, you, and it may just be that you want to focus on your kids. So we talked about knowledge, career is your life path and purpose, your career as well. And then travel is also about helpful people. It's interesting. Uh, in feng shui, it's, it's, signifies travel but helpful people and compassion it's also about attracting helpful people into your life maybe partnerships maybe things that you're going to do this year teachers you know maybe you take up a decide you're going to work on yoga and you find a great yoga studio and a great yoga teacher or a meditation teacher or a whatever a painting coach you know you go take a class um and then obviously about travel and adventure so we 
Um, I personally, I can't speak for you. I personally love this. So, no, it's um, awesome. And even like you said, I, I I don't usually go through the whole path of putting this. I bet you'll do a word to art thing. No, but here's the thing about this: I, this is is the uh, kind of the key thing. E even if you don't go through and create your whole thing, the simple fact that you're looking at it and you are focusing on it and you yeah. are doing that will change your mindset even for a short period of time you know and it helps you actually organize your thoughts so it is fantastic and i am going to pick a word although it's going to be hard for me to pick another word besides unlimited because i sure like that one so we'll see where it goes i am unlimited unlimited and you just have it and just think about if you just chose a word there's so many fun things you could do with that yep. there's all these things online you know i don't know about you but i have discovered so many i know you have discovered we certainly can't say it out loud no we cannot we've heard people listen um <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about discovery where creative people do interesting things like um, like The Rock. Okay, wow. for example, just I bet I could find a place where we could go get our words on a rock, on, on a smooth uh, river stone. And you know what? I want to find that out right now because when I have my word, I want that. I can I tell you that. right now, and I, I can't give away the source on this, but Jan O'Brien was getting something for Christmas that she's no longer getting, and I have aborted that plan because I found something that she's going to absolutely die over. But unfortunately, because it is personally one of a kind thing, won't be ready for four weeks or so. So well. uh, she, Jan's going to be getting her uh, her Christmas present uh, at the Chinese New Year. Well, I'm excited about that. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm, I, you know how sometimes you come across something, you're like, oh yes. my God, that is the perfect thing. Well, yes, that's what it is. Well, I had a little bit so of that. Plans have been <laughs> on Jan O'Brien for Christmas. This year for me in choosing a few things for the special people in my life, I wanted to do that. I've had years past where I made things and yeah. not about necessarily buying something. It just, just, it's been such a, it's just been yeah. such an emotional year really all around. And so. Um, but I, I'm telling you, let's see if we can find, so two things that you got me thinking about that will add to the show notes. One will be where things you can do with your keyword for the year, That's uh, like the stone. Like I personally want one of our stones, like we have in yeah. our background and I wanted to have my word plus the year 2021 on it. So, uh, I love it. And then you can have a collection of your words for the whole year after year. I mean, think Pretty of the cool. thing you can start, you could What's cool about this is you could do this with your family. You could do yeah. this. You could have this with everybody. You could do it with your kids and you can have it all broken down. And for obviously teenagers and stuff, they'll get it. But for even younger kids, they'll get it too about what do they really want to, what appeals to them? What do they want to focus on in the new year? What do they want to work on? Maybe they're struggling with something in school or something or, you know, whatever. Kids are smart. Um, I think I'm going to try this with Charlie this weekend. And, oh, that's a great idea. And see, cause he's reading now and see what appeals to him and just do it in a way where then, then go create, you know, his rock, you know, and I think a rock is the cool thing to do. It's very, yeah. but we should look into it. And plus I'll find a few really good resources for feng shui that are easy to digest. What a cool idea, Jan, because you could both have one, right? And then right. as you uh, move, you know, across the country, you'll be able to talk about that and those things will connect you forever. Right. I think I'll do that with him. And Very cool idea. Show that. And so, but I got to go find a place, but I bet if we went and Googled it right now, we'd be able oh, to find a place. There's no doubt have, about it. You could have your word on a necklace. You could have a word on your, um, you know, you could, whatever. I'm I've sure. I've seen so many people, you know how it is that, you know, they, once you watch, you click something on Facebook or anywhere online, it starts showing up everywhere. But there are so many places that make those like larger, not large, but, you know, um, uh, images and words out of metal, you know, that yeah. you can, like little plaques and stuff. So many of those but, out there. You know, now that I say the, 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 the little stone, I really want I want it also to be a necklace or a medallion yep. or something yep. that you could wear. And then it just, so what you're doing is again, we're setting an intention. It becomes a touchstone. Sure. You know, it's something that if you put on, it's like, I have my word on my desk. Um, then, you know, I'm looking at it every day and yep. it's helping me continue to stay in that mindset. I'm using, I'm focusing on that. I'm doing meditations around that and everything. Then you're attracting all that energy into your life. So this is how we want to kind of end our series on uh, getting in the right mindset. We've covered a lot of material. We hope we've inspired you to do all this. And next week, we're, Matt and I are going to just do a special end of the year podcast. That's just our our take on 2020. <laughs> Lord. 
our take on 2020, we're going to, we're going to record it for the, the memory. I mean, for the archives, if you will, what did Matt and Jan have to say about 2020 Best in, the middle, year ever. in the middle of 2020 uh, and document? That's one of the words I was looking forward to document the, the facts as we see them or the, and archive them. And, yeah. And honestly, I, I've been doing, like I said, for years, um, but mostly from a fun, creative way, like I could go back and go, what were the like 20 years from now? What were you could look it up anyway. Right. But you could always find all that. But I think there's some fun to putting your personal take. That's what a journal or a blog sure. is all about anyway. What's your opinion on all the things that have happened? And, and yeah. And what was your number one ordered and delivered food on DoorDash in 2020? Oh my God, that's hilarious. Do you know what the answer to that question is? I know what mine is, but yeah. All right. All right. Anything else to add, Mr. Emerson? That's all good. I mean, great stuff. It's fun. This is fun and actually can really, really help you uh, uh, focus if you really, you know, pay attention. It's awesome. All right, everybody. Have a very safe, happy holiday. And uh, we're doing one more episode that will come out right before the holidays but i still want to say happy and healthy holidays and prosperous new year prosperous and a new year that has an intention and focus that you're going to choose that's right you're listening to the wandering but not lost podcast where real estate and reality meet join us and subscribe on apple Podcasts, stitcher spotify iHeartRadio, google play and now on youtube and that is a wrap for the Wonder But Not Lost podcast, episode 147. All of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jenna Bryan, before we leave, I have a uh, story to tell you that I found particularly sweet and awfully cute. Okay. Uh, my wife, Sweet Bee, which, you know, it's not really her name, people, but. Her name is I'm Laura. <laughs> is a school teacher. She teaches fourth grade. Oh. And, uh, you know, with homeschooling, she is actually in the classroom, but it's a hybrid thing where there's like maybe half the kids there and half the kids are at home. It was up to the parents whether or not when to when send their kids to school or not. And in school, you staple a lot of your assignments together. It's a stapler. Now, I don't know. When I grew up, I had a stapler. We have a stapler. I have a stapler right here. And, you know, I don't know. Do you have a stapler in your... Okay, very good. I would bet you there are a lot of people today that don't have a stapler at home because... Why? I don't know. I just have this feel. I don't know. I don't think you do that kind of stuff like you used to in the past. We're old, Jan. <laughs> so here's the thing. And, and I know this to be true because of this story. So Laura said uh, uh, yesterday in the classroom, she said, OK, so how many of you have staplers? And only a, it's like a little smattering raised their hands. And she said, well, you know what? That would be a great thing for you to ask Santa Claus for, to have a little stapler in your stocking. And the kids are like, oh, that would be great. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So actually, it wasn't yesterday. It was a couple days ago. Okay. So one of the kids comes up to her yesterday. He says, Mrs. Emerson, I went and saw Santa last night at the mall. And I asked him for a stapler. And Laura happened to mention, remember those little tiny staplers you used to be able to get? Those little ones? Yes, like, yeah. Yeah. And she, go, she mentioned that. And um, she goes, I asked Santa for a stapler. And um, she said, did you ask for a big one or a little one? No, I asked for one of the little ones. <laughs> and, and Laura was laughing inside, right? Because she's like, oh my God, I bet you Santa has never heard I'd like a stapler for Christmas. <laughs> right? So, uh, so Laura said, so what did Santa say? And she said, he just looked at me and said, okay. <laughs> Oh my God, I love it. So Laura is laughing because I bet you there's going to be a lot of little fourth graders in uh, Orange Unified School District getting staplers in their stockings for Christmas. That's awesome. Isn't that awesome? That is a great story, man. But seriously, just a small amount of people had a stapler? Yeah, because... Did anybody just like, what's a stapler? This is when we know we're really... Well, they knew what a stapler is because they use them in the classroom. All but, right. But, but what do you staple at home anymore? I don't know. I guess you don't print out a lot of stuff. Right? No. Online. Interesting. I know. I didn't really, I it never even crossed my mind because I, and actually I think about it. I don't, I mean, we haven't bought staples probably. Not as much, but I've used it recently because I've just been organizing notes and different things. It's funny too, because you know, uh, everybody, there was, you always had the staples at your desk. You had your stapler, your, your tape, you have your hole punch. Right, so I was—I couldn't find our hole punch the other day. I, how often do you want a hole punch? Somebody? I don't even know when you would use a hole punch. Anyway. Well, here's the deal. I'll tell you when it made it. When you <laughs> when you get a hole punch, I was making because I've been uh, 
really personalizing all the Sweet Peas presents this year. And there's one present. I made a gift card to go on the front and I made it on a little piece of card. Oh, needed I needed some. And so I'm like, well, where the hell is I finally found it because we could have one. It's You're probably, talking about the one that's the individual. Yes, and it's, you know, and it's probably freaking 50 years old. You know uh -huh. what I mean? You know, but you I found one thing. Thing. I'm like, I have to jab the, the pencil. <laughs> thing or, anyway. I have the I have the three hole punch and a two hole yeah, punch. Yeah, we have one of those too. But I don't know if I have a single punch. Well, interesting. Where's well, there that? you go. This we, is like, we wax nostalgic here on the one. Oh, who even knows what this is, people? In the past, I don't know. Hang, uh, have Laura hold that up in her class and see if anybody can guess what it is. <laughs> this is funny to me. I love it. All this right. This is an ancient tool we used to use when we were little. I know exactly that. The telephone. Yeah, the answering the machine. Cassettes, eight tracks, all those good things. Yeah. All right. Okay. Everybody have a great, great weekend. Rest of your week. We'll see you next week. Yeah, get up, get out, mask up, enjoy. If a lot of people are going to be, you know, it's towards the end of the year, so, you know, just enjoy your family. Stay safe, everybody, and be forever wandering, but not lost. Mm -hmm.